So I had went back and I found a tweet that you said, hey, uh, in September 2023, you said you wanted to get into cybersecurity. Yeah. And you pretty much transitioned in six months. Yeah. What made you want to come to the dark side? So it is funny. That same day, so September, it was actually September 15th, 2023. Um, there was this tweet on the timeline. I don't even remember who tweeted it. Um, it was about, it was a lady that tweeted it and she tweeted about like a junior cybersecurity analyst role that didn't need, that didn't require any experience. Mm -hmm. And I was like, mm. so I got on Google, did my Googles. And I literally decided based on that tweet, like, uh, I think I want to do this. And I think in my Google search in, that's where the Google cybersecurity cert came up with Coursera. Um, and I signed up for it that day and I started it. I think September 15th might've been like a Friday cause it took me a couple days to start it. Um, cause I think I started the following Monday, but it literally was just kind of like on the fly. And that's kind of like the person I am. Like sometimes I just kind of decide things on a whim and I go for it, but that's really what it was. It was a tweet that inspired a Google search that said, okay, like, you know, you know, you've been wanting to get into tech in one way or another. I thought I wanted to, I, my way in would be project management. Um, but, you know, I, it was really, I had, the MGM hack had just happened, like, right before that. I was like, so that was in my brain. I remember talking to my dad about that. And so it just, it just went from there. And I was just like, you know what? I like what I'm seeing with this Google search. Like, let's, let's see what happens. And so, and that's when I tweeted I have to keep myself accountable. I have to put things out there. And I said, I'm going to, I made a decision today that I'm going to make a big change. I'm going to come back here in a few months when I, when I've done what I said I was going to do. And then that's when I went through and did the cert. Nice. Hey, shout out to Coursera. Listen, <laughs> I'm going to link my video because I reviewed the course. I'm link it right here. <laughs> so you guys could check it out. Click the link in that description so you can use my affiliate code so I can get some money. <laughs> I'm just being honest. <laughs> no, what's funny though is for a lot of people who probably have like no clue about cyber. Yeah. I direct them to that because I was like, it's, it's, it's made for entry level people yep. with no experience and kind of just breaks them down the different domains that they may be interested in. And then that's how you can figure out maybe what you want to specialize in. It made me, it taught me what I did not want to specialize in. <laughs> right. That too. So that's one of the things too. I have these calls to different people and, Oh, I want to do this. I want to do that. And then we start breaking it down. I'm like, uh, I don't know. You may want to do this. I don't mm -hmm. think you're going to like that. You think it's this way, but this is really what you're going to do at the job. Yeah. Or people are trying to do one thing and I'm looking at their skill set. I'm like, ah, right, you should look into vulnerability management. I mm -hmm. know, like, I had a call with a guy yesterday okay. about that because he kept on, like, he got on the phone, previous military, so he's a veteran. And he's like, mm -hmm. oh, I'm looking for, like, cybersecurity specialist roles. I'm like, that's a vague title. Yeah. It's like, it could be anything. And then he showed me, like, Something he did with this program or something that the military paid for. I was like, oh, you're using Nessus? I was like, oh, yeah, go ahead and look for one to vulnerability management. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, you may have a lot more skills already for that versus you trying to go do these other things or trying to do this. Right. Really, what I told him, and this is my opinion, but I told him that I believe a cybersecurity specialist is actually a cybersecurity generalist role. Yeah. And they don't exist that much. Like I know when I worked at Opta, we had some generalist roles there, and they would let slate somebody to work a couple of roles to figure out what they wanted. So whether they want to be an analyst or go into engineering, or do they want to like do like more development, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. And that's what those are for, which are cool, but yeah. those don't exist at a lot of companies. Yeah. Yeah. When I was when I first started applying, I was just kind of applying to cyber analyst roles, and they were all over the place, like. I was like, yeah. this is... Because they also can vary. I tell people, too, don't get caught up in the name. Yeah. Because one analyst could be more GRC-based. Yep. Another analyst could be more uh, blue team, SOC, mm -hmm. IR-based. Mm -hmm. So sometimes yeah. you don't know. Yeah. <laughs> and and that's where it takes sometimes. Now, we're going to get into that, too, when it comes to paying for stuff, resources, yeah. Yeah. There are a lot of different things. I really don't fault whatever way somebody do. Right. I just say, hey, if you are a person in advertising, I don't care what you charge. Like, just get results with it. Right. That's that's all I say. Because I always see sometimes people talking about, oh, somebody shouldn't pay this or that. 
But I will say in, over the last four years, some people have turned these programs into actual businesses that they scale, that they got employees with. Mm -hmm. So I can't necessarily say what somebody shouldn't charge because like, okay, if I don't charge this, then these people don't. can't get paid. Right. So it's like, now if it's just one person, I still can't tell you what you can charge yeah. because if you look at somebody getting business coaching, it's much more than what you would pay for like a boot camp or something. And yeah. those people will gladly play it, pay it. So let me talk, ask you real quick though. How was your interview process crossing over? How was that? It was good. It was, I mean, I, I think or what worked for me is that I actually reached out to um, the hiring managers that had roles open at my company. Um, and I just told them like, hey, this is what I've done so far. This is what I want to do. I'm currently account executive. Um, this is my background. I liked, I see that you have this posting up. I'd like to learn more about you and your team. Can I put 30 minutes on your calendar? Um, and then that just kind of built a relationship. And um, at the time, my company was actually building up the cyber program. Um, the recruiter that I worked with, I worked with her on actually all the cyber roles that I applied to actually. So I technically applied to four different ones. Um, she had hired 30 people um, already in a year for cyber and it was just March. So we were really ramping up. Um, but she, i so I built a relationship with her. Um, and actually one of the roles that I ended up getting offered for, she, um, reached out to me. It was like, I, I remember your background. I thought you actually might be good for this. Um, and it was actually one of the roles I ended up, um, getting a offer for. So I think just, it really was, I think, the relationship that I built more than like how well or well or bad I interviewed <laughs> because it was it was just more like they could tell that I was I was motivated they could tell that I I you know went the extra mile to like get a certification first I you know wanted to put time on people's calendar I wanted to learn more so I think that just mostly stood out more than anything else they knew I didn't have the experience they didn't care yeah, I think the devil's in the details, but you illustrate something that I I try to preach to newbies about the networking and just putting yourself out there and just never knowing. And you just pretty much dismantled the spray and pray approach that I tell people doesn't really work, mm -hmm. especially when there's so many different people trying to spray and pray mm -hmm. like you had. And I haven't seen these people marketed this app in a while, but they were toting this AI app that was going to get people interviews and <laughs> you pay X amount of money. And it's going to apply to all these jobs for you and all this stuff. And I was like, that don't work. It don't work. Mm -hmm. And that's why I don't think it was successful. They already tried to make it be more expensive than it had to be. Mm -hmm. And I'll say you got a high, I put it like this and we could probably do this in sports terms or I'll see what people will understand. The reason why some people still shoot mid range is because it's a higher percent of shot. Mm -hmm. So to me, your mid range, or we can even consider a dunk or a layup, you started within wherever you was already working. Mm -hmm. A lot of times when I have calls and people say they got a job, I say, well, do the people know where you work at, what you want to do? Yeah. And they'll say, nah, they don't. I'm scared what they're going to say because I want to leave. Mm -hmm. What you scared for is your career. Yeah. Like the last episode I just did with Josh. We were able to, like, technically he didn't get a role at his previous company doing security stuff, but they mm -hmm. were able to let him do, he was one of these different type of, uh, I don't know if there's DLP reports, I forgot what type of reports there's. Mm -hmm. But he's, the manager saw what he posted at work, I mean, on his LinkedIn, they started letting him work with the security team. Mm -hmm. And we leveraged that into getting a role at a tech company doing an instant response. Yeah. So I was like, it could be a slow grind, it could be a fast grind, but you got to start somewhere. Right. But if you don't tell anybody, or the other one I tell people is like, even if your manager knows, you're going to have to do this stuff for you. They're not going to go out their way and right. go talk to people for you. Right. A lot of people are just waiting for a handout for somebody to go do something for them. And I'm like, that's not what, you know, that's not going to happen. And it's also going into uh, the post where the guy was talking about the boot camp and I'm just saying, hey, I do know some people, like, there are certain people, like, like yourself, you didn't really need somebody to hold your hand. You knew what yeah. you were do. You're a go-getter. You'll probably be a go-getter in whatever role you do. Yeah. There are other people that are not go-getters. Right. And they just need assistance. Right. They, they will not be, 
they need to be told what to do, how to do it. Hey, you paid this money. You need to do it. Right. You only got, you know, 30 more days working with me. Get right. on it. Take your test. Right. Some people need a mom or a dad in their career. Yeah. And I think that's where the money and every other stuff comes from, just because yeah. paying for people's time and everything else, that accountability. So, but no, I definitely, I definitely like that. I think that's a good illustration of how it can be when you're focused and when you're specific in your job search. Yeah. I, I think that's the big one, being specific in the job search. A lot of times people have no job search already. I, I'll probably be rich if I count how many. Are you in the, uh, are you in that black IT group on Facebook? Uh-uh. So it's like field of like newbies and some experienced people and the newbies are always saying the same thing. I got all these certs. I can't find a job or this or that. And I'm always telling them a lot of times, like so, since someone don't have a job, I'm like, uh-huh. no, it's a skill issue. It's not yeah. a certification issue. Uh-huh. It's a skill issue. And I said, I'm willing to bet you don't have a good resume. Yep. Most of the time, those are the two factors that even just lead to people not even getting interviews. Mm-hmm. Let alone to, okay, now you got to build up the skill set of interviewing. Yeah. And so it's a simple process, but it can suck. I was like, it's like, hey, it happens to me. I get denied for stuff. I go through interviews. I've been through different interview processes. I've been through things where, you know, you interview for all these roles and they interview this way. Then you go somewhere, give you a curveball. It is what it is. But I got tricks for people to get better at that as well. We covered the two offers part. Okay, uh, that was my um, that was my prior place. At uh, oh. I can say Lincoln, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah, Lincoln. Look at me doing my research. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, man. So I'll let you actually say the proper term or your role, so I don't butcher it. So now you work as a. So my technical title is a. Lead Application Security Validation Engineer. That's her title. Okay, now we're going to get her to break that down for us if Johnny had six apples. <laughs> <laughs> um, so basically, I oversee for my team um, the DAS program, which I'm actually building from scratch. We didn't have that previous to me being on the team. Um, so that's something that I am working to build. Um, and then I oversee um, pen testing. So all the applications in our environment I make sure that they are pen tested with our vendor um, and work with the application teams to ensure that they're with they remediate the vulnerabilities within the remediation time frame. So I know you said the pen testing is with your vendor. Is this also, do you also do internal pen testing as well as external? Yes. Okay. Not as cool. So what you just said falls in line with what I would have said about the Avis breach is like technically you would be instructing maybe like the pen test team okay. or the vendor to like yeah. pen test this application and maybe yeah. see what information you got. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And I, t- I always tell people too, like people think when they want to go to be a pen tester, they think that they is going to be filling it with, you know, dark room, yeah. shades, hoodie on. When I'm like, a lot of times, man, they pay for that report. Yeah. That's the stuff you find. And for us, when we do engagements, it's like, you know, we will see if our detections catch what they're doing and mm-hmm. we got to give them so much access to do stuff, which is a good sign. Like, if, mm-hmm. we, if they could just get in and start running a rump shop and we don't see the stuff, but we're trying to see what what do we miss. That is that is how you make sure that your company don't end up on the news. Because yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's, it's at some of these things are negligence. I don't care what nobody say. You take over all these big companies and you don't do the simplest things. So, like, hey – Making sure uh, somebody needs to do multi factor authentication, right. strong passwords mm-hmm. on critical infrastructure. Right. Like, if it was a person who missed the alert or didn't do something on their end, they would be fired. Right. But when the company does it, you know, it's cool. Right. 